Welcome back to FP Executive. I'm here with Pat Horgan, Vice President of Operations at IBM Canada. Again, Pat, thank you for joining us. My pleasure, John. We're talking about smart cities and transportation, and in uh, cities today, getting goods into the city effectively can often be a challenge. And I'm interested in talking about your experience working with with uh, organizations that have been trying to find innovative and smart ways to do their logistics. Have you have you seen an increasing reliance on technology and, and looking at logistics in a different way? Yeah, we have. In fact, this changes our, our discussion about smart cities away from saying what's the public sector doing about it to mm-hmm. what is the private sector doing about it. Right. And actually, you don't have to be the biggest of the private sector to, to try to deal with this problem. Uh-huh. We have a company that we partner with called Rosano Transport out of Edmonton, and okay. they basically mm-hmm. support uh, the West. So mm-hmm. they go from B.C. to basically uh, Western Ontario, so all through okay. the prairies. Mm-hmm. Pretty extensive network. Mm-hmm. And although they're a medium-sized company, they decided to actually use telemetrics and GPS systems and sensors on their trucks to, again, take a look at where they're going and how they should optimize. Mm-hmm. Optimize by load, by size of truck, mm-hmm. and where they should be taking their loads and on a real-time basis. So they look back at history and then analyze this on a daily basis for traffic patterns, weather patterns, mm-hmm. and try to maximize their scheduling and their deliveries. This is a competitive advantage for them now. And so they... They would never go back to something that is a little bit less than this. This mm-hmm. is something that they really want to do because it'll help them really uh, advantage themselves uh, in the West here in the small company. So what happens? I'm just trying to picture this. They they collect data from uh, from their routes and from their drivers and from their trucks, right. and then they put it into a, sort of like a, a a computer system that will then sort of talk about how to reduce the amount of time on the road or how to improve the the, the, uh, the time in which you can get the, the goods to market? Right. In fact, think of it for tomorrow's traffic. I'm going to do a data analytics on you know what it looked like at this time last year, what it mm-hmm. looks like in terms of what the weather patterns look like as well, mm-hmm. and then schedule it tomorrow. So weather when patterns? I, oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. They actually look at it for all kinds of, and the types of load that they have to make okay. sure that they maximize. Mm-hmm. And then they actually, in real time, on the day of, uh, mm-hmm. shipping things around, they can also adjust. You know, if there's oh, something okay. that comes up in terms of traffic patterns that they've heard of, mm-hmm. they put that into their system to be able to even, mm-hmm. you know, a- attach the driver and make sure that they're maximizing on a daily basis. So this is well beyond the CB radio that we, we saw when uh, we were maybe a little bit younger and <laughs> truckers right. would, you know, talk back and forth. We're, That's right. We're being able to, in real time, sort of change the logis- logistics. Yeah, it's a very expensive part of their business, right? Their right. assets and their mm-hmm. fleet is, is really their core business. And so... Mm-hmm. They are giving themselves a competitive advantage by taking advantage of, of mm-hmm. analytics and making sure that they use it. And what about actually in the city? There's there's lots of businesses in cities, couriers, uh, you know, various other organizations that have to move around cities. How well does that model uh, apply to an actual urban area where you have many, many traffic lights right. and pedestrians and public transit and yeah. all kinds of those kinds of issues? Well, I can actually use an example of ourselves. Okay. Uh, we're in a lot of big cities, and, right. uh, and in fact, this was an issue for us and our employees. It's something okay. where you know, we have to think about how we get ourselves around. We have a lot of people, and, mm-hmm. and this has become something where, especially if, the, if you talk to our newer employees mm-hmm. and our better employees, they were saying, do I really have to go to the office at that time and sit in traffic? Okay. And we thought about this for a while and actually started to take steps with our infrastructure mm-hmm. and actually with addressing these employees' needs mm-hmm. by really giving them the ability to be mobile. And allowing them to be flexible. So one of the things we're doing for the cause, right. if you will, and we hope that others join on, mm-hmm. is allow your employees the, the the choice, really, to go at peak hours and, and stay away from the, the mm-hmm. traffic jams. And that's kind of what they want. They also want to be with their clients. Uh, mm-hmm. They don't necessarily have to be with us. So we've started to work on concepts to allow every employee both the opportunity to work mobily mm-hmm. and also uh, to be able to be with their clients and be still mm-hmm. available to us Mm-hmm. You know, the 24-7 that we right. really want them to be. <laughs> and this allows them, actually, a benefit because they're looking at the way of us not being involved in these traffic jams that we're talking about mm-hmm. or having to deal with getting to and from work at always the t- same time as everybody else. Mm-hmm. If you thought about that in, in every company and, and also educational institutions and mm-hmm. government, took a look at that kind of concept. Mm-hmm. Can you stagger how people go to and from work? Can they work more flexibly? Right. Uh, can they start to take the load off the peak times uh, that mm-hmm. everybody is using the system? If we were able to make some choices like that by enabling your workforce mm-hmm. and actually allowing people to do this, our 45% of employees that call themselves mobile, 
And actually, on any given day, we can add another 30% to that total where people mm-hmm. choose to be mobile that day, and we allow ourselves to actually stay productive and on top of things. Can you do this in real time? Like, like for example, let's say, I mean, everyone knows there's a snowstorm, not so many people come to work, right. but for example, if there's, let's say there's uh, some kind of traffic issue where a major artery, a 401, for example, in, in Toronto area, was, you know, somehow blocked off. Right. Is there a way to say, hey guys, you know, 401 isn't working today, let's go into, you know, plan B? And I don't know how many times this week that's already happened in my organization. (laughs) Oh, really? It's done for me and also for my employees and with my clients. So Uh the the interesting thing is that we do work more and more that way, and that's actually what our employees are asking for. It's what our clients are asking for as well. I think the payoff is probably productivity. Well, (laughs) the payoff comes in all kinds of different directions. Payoff is for our employees and their satisfaction. Right. Productivity, true. By the way, our real estate becomes more mobile. It doesn't have to be so fixed in, in place as much mm-hmm. as before. Mm-hmm. And really, when you boil it down to it, it it's just comes back to taking the load off of the central system that we're all using together. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the payoff that we could talk about. So if we all started to stagger our work times or think more flexibly about how you do your, your work, mm-hmm. I think we could probably start to take big steps to solving this problem. Interesting. Well, I, I think it sounds like one way to, to certainly have uh, transportation, the transportation load reduce, because uh, if we can reduce that peak hour, you know, glut, right. uh, I'll be a happier commuter, that's for right. sure, that's for sure. Pat Horgan, thank you so much for joining us today. John, thank you. Thank My you. pleasure. <laughs>